knew you could get a degree in self-referential humor? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 fourth wall breaks in community. I hate bottle episodes. They're wall-to-wall -wall facial expression and emotional nuance. I might as well sit in the corner with a bucket on my head. For this list, we're looking at the times the characters either addressed the viewing audience directly or made reference to the scene or situation in a way that was self-aware or meta. And we're back. Number 10. Abed knows to lay low. As the study group gathers for the day, things get rolling as usual. Banter, a couple of juvenile jokes, an appearance from the dean, typical nuts and bolts. Hi, everybody. <laughs> well, look at this group having some kind of meeting and being so diverse. There is just boy. There is just one of every kind of you, isn't there? After Abed drops a couple of his usual musings about his fellow classmates, Jeff points out that it's a little uncomfortable the way he talks about them like they're characters from a TV show. Will they or won't they? Sexual tension. Abed explains that it's his thing, but also agrees that it could get overused and decides to lay low for an episode. Community constantly subverts tropes and expectations, and no one does it better in show than Abed. Also, get used to that in this list. It is, after all, his gimmick. Well, that's sort of my gimmick. But we did lean on that pretty hard last week. I can lay low for an episode. Number 9. Claymation Christmas Traditions are important to Abed, so when his mother cancels their annual Christmas get-together, Abed suffers a small break from reality. Religiously, I'm Muslim, but I've always been a big fan of Christmas, and this is the most important Christmas in the history of the universe. I'm assuming that's why we're all stop-motion animated. I vote we let it go. He imagines that he and all of his friends are part of a claymation Christmas special. His friends are concerned, and they stage an intervention, playing along with his delusions in hopes that he'll work his way out of it. Nothing to be afraid of. All your friends are here. They just want to help. I'm here for the cookie. Of course, what the audience sees really is a claymation Christmas special, with full musical numbers and cartoon timing. Yeah, we're actually descending on a planet of it now. It's the most Christmassy planet in the universe. Its atmosphere is 7% cinnamon. Less a fourth wall break and more meta humor, it still plays with the idea of the show functioning as a show, not reality. Wow. I feel so much better now. I guess we don't need to be stop motion anymore. Well, why not just keep it going for the rest of Christmas? It just feels so right. Number 8. G.I. Joe's Yo, Joe! Like Abed's break with reality, in a later season episode, Jeff has a similar crisis. In this episode, the study group are all G.I. Joe characters with classic Joe-sounding names. Buzzkill, Tight Ship, Wingman, and yes, Fourth Wall. The fourth wall of this reality, however, is broken when Jeff finally starts to admit that what's happening isn't real and comes to terms with the fact that he was afraid of being 40 years old. Seize them! You can't seize me. I am the creator of your reality. I am Neo in the third act of The Matrix. I'm also Neo in the first act of The Second Matrix. I didn't get around to seeing the third one, but my guess is all! Oh! He realizes they're all just in a fantasy set to an old childhood favorite cartoon, whereupon he wakes up in the hospital surrounded by his friends. His eyes are opening. Yeah, but that happens when people die, too. Ooh. Number 7. Cancelled. Britta returns in year two feeling mortified about how she and Jeff left things at the end of the last year. However, she quickly finds herself a feminist icon around school. Jeff, feeling threatened by her new popularity, decides he has to find a way to one-up her. Britta, I love you. Meanwhile, Abed's been observing the shenanigans, and while at first he finds it boring, he later leans in to accelerate their relationship plot. But it's Marianne Jeffrey Winker! What the hell is this? A wedding episode. Abed, there's no wedding. Cold feet? Talk it over with your best man, George Clooney. What's up? He then cancels the episode when things get too heated. Jeff snaps and starts mocking him for not being able to tell the difference between real life and TV. Oh, good. Yeah, Abed, cancel us. And while you're at it, why don't you take your cutesy I can't tell life from TV gimmick with you? You know, it's very season one. This is a low blow, and Abed explains he can tell the difference. Unlike life, TV has to make sense. TV makes sense. It has structure, logic, rules, and likable leading men. In life, we have this. We have you. Number 6. Abed Makes a Movie Shirley's religious beliefs are never taken very seriously. In an attempt to win more people over, she decides she should make a film about Jesus and what makes Christianity cool. She asks Abed, who knows lots about film, for input. He does some research and decides he likes the source material, but thinks it needs a more postmodern direction. We need a Jesus movie for the post-postmodern world. Like, Jesus as a rapper? No. 
What ensues is Abed's own messianic rise as a filmmaker with a cult following. Every minute of our lives is a world premiere, and my father's already bought the popcorn. <laughs> but during Abed's pitch, Shirley makes it clear that she dislikes the idea. And at that moment, Abed has an epiphany as he stares into the camera. This is the movie. Abed. Number five, we're going to finally be fine. By the end of season two, it's become clear that Community is not your average comedy. Things go off the rails in big, messy, wacky ways all the time. Nothing about life at Greendale is normal or boring. However, this year the gang is committed to being less crazy. And what better way to prove that than with a huge musical number detailing their past shortcomings and declaring their newly found normalcy. We're gonna seem like a mainstream dream and be appealing to all Self-aware, and with a small fourth wall break when Annie and Jeff announced to the audience their pending intimacy. It's about as low-key and normal as a purple elephant. Which is, of course, the point. And we're gonna sleep together. And we're gonna finally be sunny and shiny. We're gonna finally be fine. Number four, part one. When Troy and Abed start sleeping at the school, they are not about to take half measures. They decide to turn the study room and adjoining halls into the ultimate fort. However, the two start to develop different visions for what the fort should be. Blanket or pillow? If you want to make a blanket fort, that's fine with me. Thank you. Just don't make it part of my pillow fort. Fine. I'll start somewhere else. Have fun stacking pillows like a baby. A bitter rivalry is born between the two friends with opposing sides clashing. When shots are fired, the coziest of civil wars begins. <laughs> With the feud unresolved by the end of the episode, the two factions part ways. But not before Abed pauses long enough to stare into the camera and prepare the audience for part two of the Pillow Fort saga. To be continued. Number three, baby delivery. The main plot to this episode doesn't matter at all. What we're interested in for the sake of this entry is what's happening in the background. I wax, dummy. This is from a blood test. Throughout the season two episode, The Psychology of Letting Go, there is an unaddressed subplot with Abed, a pregnant lady and her boyfriend. Everyone likes pelicans, they bring babies. As the episode progresses, we see Abed befriending the pregnant lady, a fight with the boyfriend, the lady going into labor, and finally the delivery in the back of a van. It's a very show within a show moment. If only the most plot-worthy points of our day had their own fun, consistent little sub-stories. I barely saw you this week, Abed. What have you been up to? Not much. Hmm. Number two, bottle episode. Wait, please, just wait. I'm sorry, but I need to know who took my pen. There comes a time in many TV shows when writers, for time or budgetary reasons, have to cut back on set and or cast for an episode. These episodes are known as bottle episodes, where characters are bottled up together in a restricted setting, often one room, and there hash out an issue for the duration of said episode. Results in quality vary. Abed, ever the astute TV viewer, can see one coming a mile away. As tensions mount after another of Annie's pens is stolen, he warns the others they're heading towards a bottle episode. Are we going to the puppy parade or not? Because this is starting to feel like a bottle episode. Again with the TV crap. And lo, that is just where they end up. Guinefer, hi. Yeah, it's me. I can't make it. Well, tell your disappointment to suck it. I'm doing a bottle episode. We got our six seasons. How about that movie, eh, guys? All right, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Honestly, Abed should probably have ranked this list himself. He would, you know. Any clue what he'd put at number one? My guess is his choice and our choice would be the same, so let's look at some honorable mentions, and then we'll see our top fourth wall break slash meta moment in community. Episode foreshadowing. Bad isn't that bad when you're doing it to bad girls. Bad isn't that bad when you're doing it to bad girls. 303. Didn't they say 304? No, 303. I wrote it down twice. Troy and Abbott's new apartment! Latvian Independence Day. What the hell is this? Latvian Independence Parade. Don't look at me, they had the proper permit. Theme song interruption. You know, you're scared that adding a new member might throw everything off of its natural. Abed on Cougar Town. And I was on the set of Cougar Town, Jeff. Cougar Town. Look, if you want me to take it seriously, stop saying its name. <laughs> you laugh, Jeff, but. The people were wonderful. Just this morning I saw this big billboard and it said cheap tickets to Hawaii and I thought, yeah, you know, why not? Why don't I just max out my credit card and just go to Hawaii? What? Am I making any sense to you? Perfect sense. 
Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Entire Pilot When we start off the episode, the show seems to go in a certain predictable way as we follow Jeff Winger into his first day at Greendale. Jeff, are you familiar with the adage, cheaters never prosper? No. And if I wanted to learn something, I wouldn't have come to community college. But as we meet the study group, in particular Abed, the expected tropes are gradually picked apart, re-examined, and compared to multiple other scripted performances. Which is spot on. The group is off to a rough start. But when Jeff gives one of his soon-to-be classic speeches, the group starts to come together and then calls him out on his bullshit. Thanks for calming everyone down, but since you're not a Spanish tutor, just a lying creep who purposely upset everyone in an attempt to get with me, I'd appreciate it if you left and stopped wasting all of our time." Weirdly freed from the constraints of their preset cliches, the show is ready to go in any direction, which it soon does. You know, I thought you were like Bill Murray in any of his films, but you're more like Michael Douglas in any of his films. Yeah? Yeah. Well, you have Asperger's. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.